Today I want to talk to you about recessions. I am not an expert, I'm going to share my story, my experience with you in the hope that this gives you some kind of positivity and encouragement because I am fully aware that right now we are all in a very tough, challenging place with the pandemic but also a recession. You might be at home right now worrying about your income, might have already lost your job, you might have lost some of your job, you might be worried about clients and customers. You might be working from home right now and you've never really done that before and you might also be juggling looking after your children and maybe homeschooling when you have no experience of teaching. Today I just want to give you a little bit of brightness in your day and a little bit of hope especially if you have been hit financially by this current situation. So the last recession hit in 2007, eight, so 11, 12 years ago now, which is crazy because on one hand it feels like it was only a few years ago, but on the other hand, it changed so much for so many of us that it feels like a lifetime ago. I was hit by the recession, it affected me in many different ways, and it pretty much changed the course of my career. At the time, of course, it was pretty horrendous and it was really, really difficult for me to see the positive side of things, to see any opportunities. And so if you are sitting there thinking, why me? Why is this happening? I get it. I completely understand you and I, I know what that feels like. I'd never really experienced anything like this before. In my childhood, there was a recession and I remember something about us at one point owning two houses because we hadn't sold the other one and we were bridging and it was a scary time for my parents but I was so young that I was kind of oblivious to it. So this was the first recession that I really was experiencing. I didn't necessarily think naively that it would affect me. I knew it affected the economic world and house prices and things like that but I didn't really appreciate that it could affect me in such a huge way. I remember being in a sandwich shop buying my lunch with a couple of colleagues and we were looking at the newspaper headlines and seeing all these graphs and charts and things that I didn't really get the grasp of all. My story might be like many out there. I had a pretty good life, an amazing career that was just taking off. I was just about to become a chartered architect, was working in a great company, had loads of fantastic projects under my belt. I was working on some big budget university work. I had just bought my own apartment, was renovating it, was loving living there. I had a boyfriend. I had lots of things going for me. And then, boom, it all changed. When the recession hit, of course it hit quite rapidly, but there were points when I suppose in hindsight I could see it coming. Working within architecture, the construction industry, you definitely see a difference. While studying for my chartered exams, I unfortunately got a phone call from my brother letting me know that my dad had passed away. I of course dropped everything, went to the hospital, was with my family and then I spent a few days at home with them helping out with everything and just being together. In that time my apartment got broken into, my laptop got stolen and it's just it's not a nice time but of course I was also grieving. It just felt like everything was going wrong and it was so difficult to see a positive in any of it. I'm sure there are lots of you out there who also feel like that. When my boss or the management team started laying people off, you definitely felt the atmosphere in the office change. To become an architect, you have to undertake many different kinds of examinations. The one I was doing at the time was the written exam, which is a 48-hour written exam in the office. So you do it under examination conditions. So I was kind of locked away in a back room. I wasn't necessarily exposed to what was going on in the office. When I would go out for a cup of coffee or something, I could definitely tell that there was an uncomfortable atmosphere and that maybe some people weren't there or had started clearing out their desks. I was in an exam, I tried to focus and keep my head down, but it was still eating away at me. And so on the first day, at the end of the day, I called my boss in and I asked him if I still had a job. And he said to me, no, I'm sorry, we have to let you go. Which was, yeah, 
insert really bad word. I had my exam to finish and I'd worked so hard to get to this point that I wasn't about to let any of this come between me becoming a chartered architect. So I took my stuff, went home, called my mum and my sister, they came over, we had some food and then I carried on my exam and I just got my head down and just got on with it and luckily a few months later I found out that I passed. Win for me. So suddenly I was a chartered architect and now didn't have a job and it didn't look like there were many prospects out there. So I managed to get a couple of temporary jobs and I worked on some amazing projects in that time. I'm really glad that I got that chance. It gave me a little bit of variety and more exciting projects to talk about. But I found myself back in my apartment looking for work, feeling like I needed to put myself into something where I felt like there was a goal at the end of it and I could focus on that and build something for myself. And so I started Layout Lines. At the same time, I was updating my CV, working on my portfolio, making sure that I had some kind of online presence, which was Layout Lines, putting myself out there to see what there was and just hope for the best. I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn and I got approached by an education corporation in Singapore. It felt so out of the blue, like it wasn't real. It was just this really exciting opportunity when I was surrounded by negativity and scarcity and unemployment. And so I went through with it, replied to them. We arranged a phone call. We did a Skype call and then I think after a number of different Skype interviews, I actually got the offer of a job within a very quick amount of time. Packed up all my belongings and said goodbye to my family and was off to Singapore to be trained up, given the teaching material, and then the real adventure started. I was off to India to set up some design schools for that university. It's kind of crazy to actually think that a few weeks before I had been signing on for unemployment support as a chartered architect along with all of my other fellow classmates who were now chartered architects as well. We just couldn't get any kind of job because we were overqualified for so many things and there was nothing in the construction industry and suddenly this university wanted to fly me over and then be responsible to set up campuses in India for their university. It was pretty exciting and definitely the boost that I needed. At no point in any of this would I have believed you if you'd said that that's what I was going to do or that I would be living in India or that I'd be teaching and not working as an architect. And I have absolutely no regrets now. I lived in India for a couple of years. I have been back and forth to India for something like seven years with either university work, the British Council or recruitment drives for universities. I feel such a connection to India and I feel like we talk about India as mother India and I definitely feel like India is kind of like a mother to me. <laughs> I learned a lot from my time in India. I am a believer that everything happens for a reason and although it was very, very hard to find the reason in losing my job when it happened and my dad and being broken into and all these different things that happened. Hindsight is a beautiful thing. I feel like this is just the path that I was supposed to go on. Yes, I was supposed to go and train to become an architect. That education helped me to educate so many other students and now to work on my own education programs and share that knowledge and experience with you guys. I know it's cliche but it is all written in the stars. My mum always says what's for you won't go by you. It seems like such a strange place for a Scottish girl to go. There are links there, there are connections. Whilst I was there that really helped me because I was obviously grieving my dad and grieving the loss of my career. That's what it felt like at the time. And I'm sure a lot of you are also feeling like that. Not only is a pandemic a really stressful, worrying thing that's happening, a recession is also stressful and worrying because it all affects us. We are feeling that grief in some way. I know that India and teaching isn't for everyone, but I just wanna share my story with you to try and give you a kind of glimpse into 
the possibilities that are out there. I know everyone says look for the opportunities, look for open doors and it's really hard to see them especially if you're feeling why me, why is this happening, I don't deserve it. Yes why you but what's in it for you, what can this bring, what changes can your life benefit from from this. I got to go off and experience this amazing life where I met some fabulous people and I grew as a person so much more than I think I would have if I was just still working in an office as an architect. And I just think that is what I was supposed to do and I now have so much more knowledge and experience and a richer life experience to share with you guys and to try and put out there and impact the world in a much better way, a greater way. And it kind of came back full circle. So I got approached by a university in the UK when I was in India. They offered me a job. I didn't take that job, but then it did kind of plant the seed and I started looking around, got a job offer. They wanted me to work with their recruitment team with the British Council, so I got to travel back and forth to India and different parts of Asia as well. So I still got to fulfill that travel bug part of me. I also got to meet Ingemar and do some recruitment work over in Iceland with them, which was kind of weird. And is, it gives me a kind of reassurance that all of this is what I'm meant to be doing and I'm on my own path that someone bigger, greater than me is looking out for me. And I just, I really hope the same for you. There is something there for you. There's, there's different things out there for you and it's up to you to try and find them and to be open and ready when they come along. And they will come along and they'll come along at the right time for you as each individual person. To prepare you for that, I wanna do my best to try and share sources of knowledge and experience with you. So I've created a page on my website which is dedicated to surviving the recession and not only surviving, but thriving. Think about it. We are in a pandemic right now, which has kind of forced us all to be at home right now and to kind of slow down our lives. Yeah, you might still be working and juggling kids and very, very busy or busier than normal. Most of us have had to kind of slow down our day, our weeks. We can't really plan for the future because we don't know how long this is going to go on for. And so we're having to live in the moment. And I think that's a great thing. Pretty much everyone is online right now. And so now more than ever is showing us that being online is really important. So if you have a business that you can't go to your shop or your office or meet with your clients and customers, then now you need to start working on an online presence for your company, your business, your products, whatever it is that you do, and try and figure out how you can serve your people right now. Thinking back to 11 years ago when I was sitting there worried for my future and having no idea what I could do. I wish I had something like this and so that's why I want to create it and share it with you or whoever you know that could do with this link, please share it with them as well. But for now, I just wanna say look after each other, stay in contact with each other because right now there is so much community and positivity and amazing things coming out of this. Stay home, stay safe, and I'll see you in another video.